there we are. Okay, good afternoon, good morning, good night uh, to everybody around the world. Uh, this is um, March 9th, uh, Google Summer of Code office hour. So uh, welcome everybody. Uh, today I have some uh, uh, general uh, announcements to do, and uh, we're going to discuss and explain uh, three projects uh, more in detail. So there will be a presentation, and uh, we'll also answer uh, some questions. So the projects will be building Android apps with uh, Jenkins, a Docker-based uh, Jenkins uh, quick start example, and then uh, Jenkins configuration as code, the drift uh, detect detector. So first of all, we with, well, we wanted to say with spring, but with this period around the world, the world makes a big hiccup because of the various time changes in parts of the world. So some parts starting with uh, the West Coast of the United States or even the whole United States is changing time and moving to summertime. Uh, from next week on, to adapt to that situation, we're going to start one hour earlier uh, everywhere. So um, this means that for India and China, as there is no time change there, we'll start one hour earlier, which is good because it's late uh, for you this time. So the meeting time will be uh, 15 hours uh, UTC, so 3 p.m. UTC. Uh, I didn't make the math for uh, India and uh, China at that time. So be aware of that. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to share, remind everybody, is that uh, for um, students or GSOC contribute contributors, it's now plenty time to submit your drafts of your proposals. We're getting quite a couple now. I think we're running about six, six or seven proposals now. They're being reviewed. Continue working uh, on that. It's important. Uh, Give some time for the mentors to review the documents, so be patient. Uh, but um, provide them for a review. Next milestone is uh, March 20th. Uh, you can start publish. Uh, so register on the Google Summer of Code uh, site and publish your uh, proposals. You will still be able to change and update this proposal until the deadline. But at least you have already uh, uh, one proposal recorded. So you can start whenever you, you feel ready. The door close, definitely. Uh, April 4th, April 4th is the deadline. Everybody falls dead, dead and nothing moves anymore. No, joking. And, so, and it's 404, so not found. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, 404. Uh, so deadline, very important for all the students uh, and GSOC contributors. Uh, then we will have one month to review and rank all the proposals, set up our proposals. So uh, we will then start, we mentors will then start our homework. Focus on April 4th is the final date where you can submit uh, your proposals. 
this said, we'll keep some time aside uh, at the end of uh, this session. It will be a one hour session, the last one hour session, uh, because we're presenting now the three last projects, um, the project ideas. Uh, the timing will be about 10 minutes for every project, and we'll have about five minutes to answer uh, uh, to answer questions. So there I'll be uh, attentive not to go overboard and that we keep some time at the end for general questions. Are there questions, remarks at this stage of the presentation? I'll leave a blank of a couple of seconds. Then we can start. Yeah, with the ah. I have a question. Go ahead. Actually, I have submitted my draft proposal, and I just wanted to know that uh, in what key points the uh, org admins are going to rank the proposal. The so currently uh, there is no ranking in the review. If I understood your question correctly. Uh, this is a review where we help to improve your, your uh, proposal. And it's not only mentors. Mentors, I chase them because I want every mentor, mentor to, to review them uh, the, the, the best they can. But there's no judgment at this stage. So we really tell a, this is unclear. So this you should uh, rework. Yeah, I'm just uh, uh, asking, uh, like after uh, 4th April, how in what key points uh, the mentors are going to rank the proposal? Okay, we're going to explain that later. So currently, uh, don't, uh, don't waste too much effort there. In a nutshell, uh, we're going to rank the projects or the proposals on the criteria, is this particular candidate uh, able to achieve successfully the goals of the project? During the summer, will he achieve with the mentors what he promised uh, that he will that he will do without having uh, the mentor having to spend twenty. 20 hours a week or 40 hours a week to help or uh, um, to, to, mentor, to mentor him. I don't know if this is clear enough for you. The criteria yeah. are explained uh, in various documents. I can point you to that. Yeah, yeah thank you, Mark. Okay. So it's basically the likelihood of success. Okay. We can come back later uh, to that in the in the presentation. So we'll start with the first uh, project. We have uh, building Android applications. So we have our Android men hmm. with us. Yeah, Android men. Why not? <laughs> the guy who has to build Android apps with various CI CD tools and the latest being Jenkins, of course. Uh, so I don't know if you still have somewhere, Mark, um, that description of the project. Of course, I know it, but it's better if I have a support somewhere. So do you plan on sharing your screen or should I do with mine? Uh, can you do it with yours? I'll try to, uh, if I ever can or find the right <laughs> link otherwise... to do though. So, uh, you but you even... click on the link. I'm I'm going to do it here. Hold on. I can share, but I need the link at least. The link is in the document uh, here. I'm going to. Yeah, I here. I I have it here. I'm going to move because I have my screen set up here. No problem. I have found the link. Yeah, that's okay. I will share my screen. Um, you have it. I'm... Otherwise, I'm. Yeah, yeah. Struggling. Thanks a lot, Mark. Sorry for that. I should have prepared that. Uh, so let me see if I can 
Yeah, I think I got it. Okay, so I can't see you anymore, but I guess people can see my screen. Yes. That's cool. So building Android apps with Jenkins, why not? Uh, the thing is, when you search on the Jenkins uh, I.O. website about Android and Jenkins, you don't find much, if any. <laughs> and that doesn't mean it's not possible. That means that not that many people have contributed to the documentation or to proof of concept to show that, yes, it's possible to do with Jenkins. So the thing is, when you want to build a mobile app uh, with CI, it's a different kind of CI CD that what you have for other stacks, for example, for the web or for um, embedded boards or things like that. It's different. You have to have the CI CD mindset, but you also have to have the mobile developer mindset. And the two of them sometimes collide, they don't merge easily. So most of the time, um, what I've seen in my previous jobs is that mobile developers do their CI more or less by themselves and it takes them 10 to 20 percent of the time and they're not really efficient at that on the other hand when uh, people who do only ci try to do mobile uh, ci cd it's kind of difficult for them because they don't really know the ecosystems which are tightly constrained by uh, google and apple for ios so it's difficult to have something efficient and when I came to Jenkins, I made a proof of concept uh, with Jenkins, which allows to build uh, and release Android apps easily uh, with Jenkins on lots of platforms on Windows, Linux, uh, Vagrant, and on various CPU architectures. So it's something that works, but it's only a proof of concept. And maybe it's still too complicated for people to use it in their production you know so i was wondering if i could get some help uh, for the google summer of code in order to propose something that would work better that would target a um, more massive audience not only people who are familiar with docker compose uh various cpu architectures but yeah i would like that someone uh, who already has done something with android development and somebody who is also interested in CI CD and who knows some, not everything, but some of the particularities, the tips and tricks that you need to build and release, to build, test and release an Android application with a CI CD. So if you don't know um, Jenkins yet, that's not really a problem. We still have some time to learn, but I'd like that the um, people who want to tackle with this project know already about Android because we won't have time to learn Android development before starting with CI CD with Jenkins. So yeah, what I'd like in the end is that we have some documentation on Jenkins.io, not a blog post, real documentation on how to start Android development with Jenkins. And I also like that we have a repo somewhere with a working not proof of concept, something that could work even in production. So that's maybe a little bit ambitious, but that's what I like in the end. We only have 175 uh, hours, Jean-Marc, am I right? Yes, correct. So yes, first of all, documentation, so that when people will search for Andrew Jenkins, boom, they will get some links on Jenkins.io website and links to things, tutorials, how to, whatever, that do work. For them that they can experiment at home and then more detailed documentation that will um, help people to get that into a production jenkins controller at least that's a goal so of course you will have to study and improve the jenkins technical architecture if you don't know it yet that's not a problem for the time being but you have to know you have to have the basics of android application development because it's very very specific at least to me, it's very, very specific. When you want to make a release on Google Play Store, for example, it's kind of difficult. And if you never, ever have done it, that will take some time uh, to learn. And I'm not so sure that we will have the time uh, to study that. So if you think that you could do that before it starts for real, that's OK. But if you never, ever have touched Android development, maybe you should find another project. I hope I'm not too rude or gross when things that, but 
that the truth it's kind of um it will take some time you know to get accustomed with android development so yeah that thing and of course you have to know even if you don't know jenkins you have to know basics of ci principle and practice and it would be nice if you already knew the basics of docker because that's the way i envision it or even if we find something else another way of doing and Android build with Jenkins without Docker. The thing is, the proof of concept have made is using Docker. So as this will be our starting point, I'm afraid you will have to know things about Docker and Docker Compose. Um, I think I'll say everything I had to say about that. Jean-Marc? Yeah, I think you basically covered uh, everything. Thank you very much, Bruno. You're welcome. Very nice. Are there a question about that project? Okay, fine. Listening, giving some time to people to find a mute button. Yeah, <laughs> that's smart. <laughs> okay. And we'll have some spare time uh, at the end. Okay, uh, is there somebody who wants to present uh, Docker-based Jenkins quick start examples? Otherwise, I will do the presentation of that project. I can help okay. if you want to, John Mark. We can do it uh, together. I'll I'll start. I'll start, and you and you jump in if I. Yeah. Fine. Struggle too much or get uh, get uh, belly. So I'm going to share my screen. I had time to organize mm -hmm. everything. So share. Here we are. And this is the screen. You can see it, okay? I can see it. Great. I will make it a little bit bigger. So there we are. Okay, so I think all of you experienced uh, that very frustrating feeling and say, I've been told that Jenkins is a super duper tool and I want to try it. I want to experiment it and see how it works. And then start the difficulties. Because it's either you have all the machines that you that you want, you have Linux machines or or whatever. Uh, there's not a simple way in a couple of minutes to start a Jenkins environment so that you can start playing around with it and having uh, a good feel of its major. Uh, features and that you have a, a good demo environment. This is what quick starts, quick, quick starts are for, uh, meaning uh, that uh, you have a setup, you clone a repository, you run three times around the, the house screaming, or you do whatever magic you want, and there you have a running environment. Now, there are different ways to do it, uh, to have this quick start uh, environment or checklist or whatever. Uh, everybody has the hunch uh, that using Docker Compose uh, to have some, some examples, some automation around it uh, is the way to go. So it should achieve some, some goals is that it must be easy to run on most environments, not requiring complicated uh, dependencies, uh, run in Windows environment, run on Mac OS, on Linux, uh, so the, the various environments, um, not requiring complicated knowledge creating ssl keys or or these kind of things everything should be in and then probably properly documented and uh 
automate the updating should be automate uh, should be automated in the sense that when somebody wants to try the quick start he always has the latest version um, available and running so that we have some kind of CI of this CI environment in the, that it that we work so this is a very important project because this is something that's missing and I think that probably everybody here around the table uh, knows that it's frustrating the first experience is frustrating to get something running and but you're proud afterwards when you have done it but this is unnecessary energy this is uh, our showcase and sh we should improve that yeah, I can remember the frustration when starting with Jenkins and Docker. And yes, of course, I was kind of proud once I got it working, but I didn't know why it worked. And that was even <laughs> more, more frustration. Uh, in the official documentation, you have uh, installing Jenkins starting with Docker and so on. So you have uh, commands that you can replicate so that it works uh, on your computer, but it's unnecessarily complicated. And it makes you do some things, create a Docker file and for no real uh, reasonable reason, in fact. So that's kind of disturbing. And yes, we have to change that. And the idea was to create a set of different Docker Compose files for different um, needs. For example, the things I just showed with Android, for example, uh, there could be an example for Android with uh, a, a Jenkins controller, an Android agent, a non-Android agent. We could have some examples to build some I don't know, um, uh, embedded software. We could have something to build some uh, Java code. We could have something that produces a website and so on and so on and so on. And the magic in that would be that every Docker Compose file would be then tested regularly on ci.jenkins.io so that anybody wanting to start is assured that it will work. It has been tested. And every time we change something, we know that it works. And that's wonderful. Um, and in the end, it's with them. Uh, it could also run thanks to Gitbot. So I don't know if uh, everybody I, I is. Think... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Romo. No, no. You're you're saying the magic word. I was I was keeping it for the end. I I was. Go ahead. But <laughs> Gitbot is or these kind of environments uh, are are very promising and give the necessary uh, standardized environment or or. Uh, infrastructure agnostic uh, environment. So uh, my proposal for, for that uh, uh, would be uh, to look into Gitpod, uh, which has Docker Compose abilities, uh, enough memory, enough CPU, uh, and, and to use that for a demo. Uh, maybe look at other alternatives. I know that the GitHub uh, Code spaces. Code, Code spaces, spaces has it mm. for. Uh, it, it, it's part of the complete package uh, that you can do. And thank you for Bruno for raising it. I was keeping That's it okay. for for the end, or I, I didn't want to throw because well, one of the problems that needs to be thought about is where well, Gitpod is currently there is a free tier in it, so uh, it's very open source oriented. What happens if they need to make money and say, well, we don't give it for free anymore. So it's part of the discussion. It's part of the things uh, to to think about. Yeah, very good know. point, Bruno. Yeah, so, no, you, you introduced me to Git, but I think so, <laughs> that's okay. Um, the thing is, yes, we may have vendor lock uh, two years from now, we never know. And even same with GitHub code spaces, you never know what could happen two years from now. And GitHub and, and Jenkins are already intertwined. Uh, if ever we sh would have to leave GitHub, <laughs> wow, that would be difficult because it helps us 
immensely every day for with GitHub Actions, for example. But anyhow, that's not the subject. The thing that we have to uh, remember is that we would like a set of well-working examples for people to be able to start easily with Jenkins and Docker on various platforms, on their laptops with Windows, Mac OS, even on um, Mac M1 for the most fortunate ones. Why not? Or with Raspberry Pi, for example. That's also possible. That's one of the aims. So. Lots, not all of them, but lots of the examples should be able to work just about everywhere so that anybody could start with Jenkins easily. That's the goal. Very good. Thank you for the additional color in helping me to promote this project. It, this is a project that uh, we're both looking for to improve. The first you, impression on, uh, on Jenkins. Are there questions? So we made a good job in explaining it. Okay. I don't know what happened to my thing ready here. So are these questions last call? then we're going to go to the next subject. Okay, the last subject, um, Jenkins configuration is code drift detector. So uh, GCASC, for those who are unfamiliar uh, with that, is a mechanism where you can describe uh, the configuration of a Jenkins environment as code. Meaning you have a text file where you define the various parameters, uh, the various configuration for plugins, for the security. It's rich and it's uh, uh, well, uh, it, it's evolving. This is really a, a great, great feature addition uh, to Jenkins. Uh, I've, I've been very involved in that uh, in the early early days uh, of that. This is great, and you can build very sophisticated uh, systems or or workflows where the only way to change your configuration is that you change the configuration file, push it as a pull request merge it, restart it uh, uh, on, uh, on the production Jenkins, and this is the cycle. And the only way allowed to change uh, the configuration is to do it through the code. And I've seen uh, uh, people uh, pushing that very, very far. They even disabled uh, the administrative consoles and did not allow uh, people to to go uh, through it. Now, this is a little bit extreme because in certain cases, uh, you need to be able to experiment or to fix a production uh, incident. You need to, to change a parameter or you need to change uh, uh, one of the secrets so that you can connect again to uh, the da database. And uh, this can be done through the, uh, the graphical user interface. Oh, but then we start to have a problem there that uh, on one side, we have the configuration that's defined as code and then somebody experimented or had to fix the configuration. And if we reapply the JCAS configuration, everything will be lost. So you can do it manually, starting to compare and trying to know what happened, what changed. And if you're sloppy, there can be a lot of changes. So if you, you configure it once, and then you revisit this configuration 
uh, so JCAS configuration two months afterwards, there can be have been a lot of things changed that you're not even aware because there may be another system admin uh, that changed these parameters. How do you know? How can you control it? How can you uh, uh, monitor that? And currently, uh, it can be done manually. So you need to export the configuration and start to compare by hand. It doesn't come in the right order. And uh, there, are, there are a lot of problems, hurdles, uh, potholes uh, to go that way. But this is a feature that many people told me, uh, say, hey, that would be handy so that I can quickly verify, did my configuration diverge, drift from what was charted, what is written in the document? What has changed? Oh, this is the detail I know. That was a temporary fix. I can reapply the configuration. So this is the idea about this drift detector. It is writing or creating a tool that you can run that has some a command, command line parameters uh, that will spit out and tell you either your configurations are equal, what's running, and what you defined. Oh no, you have this and this and this that's different and the different ways to, to, uh, to present it. So uh, you can read in the project uh, proposal, there's no, no additional value for me to, uh, to read that. Um, I try to explain as clearly as possible uh, what it is, why it's uh, important. Uh, the tool can be written in whatever you want does not need to be Java because the, it would work with the command line interface with the available interfaces. There's no limit. The sky is the limit the way you can start going into the internals or you can use existing application interfaces to uh, read. You can do it in Java. You can use a modern language like Golang or, or even Rust if you want. You just need to have enough people that know that can help you uh, improve your tool and and maintain it. So there are no limits there. Are there doubts or questions about uh, this project? Yeah, there is one thing I need to share with you is that seeing the number of proposals, seeing my personal workload, I will not be able to mentor this project. So it's, it's, you're not going to be disappointed by that. Although I like this feature, uh, I will not be able to commit and we might run into issues finding good mentors uh, for that, that project. So are there questions, are there uh, doubts about this? Yeah, I have a I have a question, please. Go ahead, Yusef. Uh, I'm Reginald Jenkins, and uh, make a lot of practice with Java and Go. But what I don't know is uh, Java configuration as a tool. What should I learn to can contribute to this project? Um, the first thing you need to learn is how Jenkins and the configuration as code works and the various APIs. So their CLI, Jenkins CLI uh, commands that are used to upload, download, and manipulate the configurations. So you need to learn those first. And then you need from there to think, uh, how would I implement? Yeah, don't forget that we would like to see in your proposal some kind of project plan. How are you going to solve that? Does that answer your question, Yusuf? 100%, yeah. Thank you so much. 
So I've seen there were questions also on, on Gitter, and so I, I was not able to answer them correctly. Uh, there's some exploration to be done uh, there, and there's no simple path or, or, or obvious path to solve it. I had some ideas in the time I thought writing that myself, but uh, so first tip, learn Jenkins configuration as code, all the details, do it, do it. Second, then learn to do it with the command line interface, not with the UI. And once you can reproduce that, start thinking, how does the system behave when it's defined as code and when I do it with the UI? What can I use to match those or start comparing them? Okay? Okay. That's good. Other questions? Opening to broader subjects. If you have questions on the two previous projects, uh, you can uh, raise them now, or you have more general questions that you would either want to revisit or ask now. I have a general question, please. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I see you uh, writing in GitHub. Is that if I, if I can provide my abilities in GitHub, I should make a, at least two pull requests. What should I do in this two pull request? Just write my name. Uh... I'm not sure that I catch the complete context of your question. So I'll try to answer it and you need to correct me if I did not answer it correctly. So what we strongly advise uh, uh, GSOC contributors or candidates is that they get acquainted with the way the community works the principle of pull requests and that you do actual work, actual contributions to Jenkins in any form. And you can use or you should use these contribution and reference them in your uh, uh, proposal and saying, I know what a pull request is. I know how uh, and this is what needs to be demonstrated, that you know how the Jenkins project handles pull requests. What is the review process? What are the communication channels uh, used to discuss uh, them? That you demonstrate also that you have enough understanding of the, of the, the, the application's architecture, that you know what are the different components what's an agent, a controller, that, that, that you know uh, uh, all that. Uh, this will all help you to demonstrate to us when we do the ranking and say, well, okay, this particular candidate has good experience. We will not have to spend time to teach him these basic uh, elements. We don't need to teach him how Git works for instance, or how to do a pull request on GitHub, because this is extra cost uh, that we will have to uh, uh, take on, on ourselves and, and time that will not be spent on actually doing the project. Is, is that the answer to the question you had or did I answer another question? Yeah, you answer my question, yeah. Okay, and by experience, by doing two pull requests, uh, you get already enough uh, terrain experience uh, 
to know what you're talking about and to have that. So, but uh, we're, we're, we're not going to reject or not read your proposal if you didn't uh, do it. But uh, the more you do, the better we, you're known, the better you're integrated in the community, the better your chances are. Other questions, doubts? So while you think about other questions, so uh, start working on your draft proposal draft now early. Uh, it would the community will be able to guide you and tell you, oh this information is missing, or we don't understand uh, that part of your reasoning. It's part of the learning process. So it, it, uh, open source is all about communicating. And we want to help you to communicate your ideas, who you are. We want to help you that, to communicate the best, uh, uh, best available uh, manner. And this is the review process. It's a very bad idea to submit your proposal unreviewed the day before. Because generally, in my experience is there are pieces missing, keep, uh, uh, sections that we don't understand and, and are not to the point, and you've wasted a lot of energy uh, with that. So submit them as early as you can. And it's not a judgment, so be to remember that. We're not judging your proposal. And, and all proposals are good. Everybody is good. We just, at a certain point, need to order them, to rank them. So that's, that's a, I hope this point uh, is clear. Okay. Other questions, other topics you would like to discuss? Other difficulties? Yeah, last point, but I think with the discussions uh, online, it's obvious. Use the template that's available uh, on the Jenkins uh, GSOC page. Use that. There, it's a very good guideline of the questions and the topics you need to cover. But please don't forget to fill it your information just copying the template won't do it yeah <laughs> <laughs> good point yeah that's that's true that's that, that, that's true yeah 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 i've seen it i've seen it gsoc is work gsoc is is a great adventure and as i explained it earlier in in december i believe it's like climbing a mountain it's a great adventure there are wonderful vistas to be seen, but you need to train. And at certain times, you're going to tell yourself, why did I start? What In what mess did I get myself? But when you get to the end, you will say, hey, that was a great journey. John Mark, we have a question in the chat window from Prince. Oh. Can I make... Yeah. Can I make proposal for more than one project? Yes. So yes to you and yes to the question. So thank you to have watched uh, the, the chat uh, for me. Yes, you can submit proposals for uh, as many projects uh, as you want. Uh, there is no limit there. Just don't waste our, our time by submitting a blank project. There must be substance in it, like Bruno said, but you can do any. And, and you're not limited to the Jenkins project. It's not because you're, you're uh, working on Jenkins and we most welcome you in, on the Jenkins project. Uh, you can uh, submit ideas on other projects uh, projects, uh, so other uh, GSOC uh, organization is the correct word for that. 
But just remember, whole, uh, listen to an old man. Uh, the more you spread your efforts, the weaker the results will be. <laughs> Yeah, can I add where we we want quality over quantity. So just keep that in mind. That's a very good summary, Alyssa. Thank you. Yeah, very good summary. Did I answer the question to uh, from Prince? I guess this is a yes. Yes. Okay, yes, in the, in the chat, and now open the, the window. Uh, Other questions, subjects? Rahul, Go ahead, Alisa. Says, Rahul says, uh, hi, this is my first meeting and first project. Can I contribute Jenkins project? Okay, I'm, I see several questions in Rahul's question, so with uh, several drawers. And I'll, I'll try to answer uh, everything. So first of thing, uh, first here, Raúl, welcome, welcome to have taken the time to to join. Uh, we have a document uh, that where we keep the notes on all the the meeting. I'm going to turn off the the screen sharing because it's not useful anymore. There, and so. So uh, we have a notes uh, document that we can uh, remind in the, um, uh, I think that's the one that Chris mentioned in the beginning. Uh, in that document are the notes of all the meetings that we held and there is a link to all the recordings. So I invite you to uh, listen to those recordings. Uh, we had also some more general uh, sessions earlier, but they were for, for that time. So, um, um, there you'll get uh, a lot of information. Don't forget to join the Gitter channel or the community.jenkins.io. There you'll see a lot of people read the messages that were before. There's a lot of very useful information available uh, 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 there. Um, the sessions that are referenced uh, in, once we started the office hours, uh, we have a presentation in them for every project idea uh, that, that we have, listen to it, and there's some very good tips or advices uh, on that. Another question that I see, so first project. Uh, so I guess this is the first uh, a GSOC organization you're, you're approaching. So I think it's a very good idea to start with Jenkins. We're very, very friendly and is a very useful product to learn uh, about. Uh, there are other organizations available on uh, Google Summer of Code. But I need to be dishonest here and say that Jenkins is the best. So the end of publicity. So. Um, there are several project ideas you can uh, that are related to Jenkins, where you can submit proposals uh, on. And last thing is, you don't have to make it this year. So experience has shown that uh, students that start working early, when I say early, it can be a year in advance, um, is that uh, start to learn Jenkins, start to learn the product, start to learn the community, start to learn how open source works. And so you can do it by running this year and submitting a proposal, you're most welcome and we will help you. But it's a very good idea that you start getting interested in open source, in Jenkins, submit pull requests, contributions, learn. Hacktoberfest is also another event uh, that we're running where we encourage and help newcomers. 
to learn how it goes. And so if you don't make it this year, in, because Google Summer of Code is very competitive, I need to be honest there. So a lot of people are interested, but we will end up selecting my hunch is no more than six. If we go over six, that would be a miracle. So, but we, it's it's a handful of candidates will make. Last year we had four projects uh, running, so uh, it, it's very competitive. But you can prepare, you can learn, and and you can do it for a long, uh, a long, long period. You, you, you can already start preparing for 2024. Now, there was a long-winded answer. Uh, Raul, did I answer your question or did I completely lose you? Don't hesitate to unmute. <laughs> and the sir, I know it depends from the country you are, but sir, you add 10 years <laughs> to my, <laughs> it makes me feel very old. So uh, I'm 65, but uh, you're making me 75 with the sir. I know we're here together. So Jean-Marc, uh, Yosef, Yosef has a question. Would you suggest documentation or something like course to understand how Jenkins works internal as components? Oh, that would be a good idea to start writing uh, that and a good contribution uh, or at least note uh, here, uh, there are documentations available uh, in the, uh, now I'm a little bit stuck here, what's happening there. Uh, if you go on Jenkins.io and you look at, um, uh, that, well, yeah, there, there uh, Bruno is helping me. I have my... I'm sorry, it's not the official documentation, but it's a Jenkins contributor, Said Boston Dust, who made a complete series of <laughs> how to use Jenkins, how does Jenkins work and so on. I think that's a very good uh, way to start with Jenkins, but of course there also is the official documentation on Jenkins.io. Uh, my, my screen is locked here. I don't have a view anymore. Uh, so I try to move this here. Uh, if you go in documentation, there's a, a developer documentation, uh, oriented documentation available. Another good tip to start understanding is the series of modernizing, uh, modernizing a plugin. This will help. Um, and of course, so, Darren Pop's um, videos on the yeah. Cloud Beast TV on YouTube. It's a must have. He goes very back to the basics for Jenkins, and I learned a ton of things with Darren Pope. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Raul, prerequisites, none. There are no prerequisites, but the only if there are many people that submit, uh, we, we're going to choose the best or uh, the available, available projects or the available mentors. So um, uh, this, I, I don't know if I, I answered your question, Raul. Yeah, architecture. Uh, Yusuf, I, I know it's not available. There's no easy help. The only thing you can you can do to learn that is take your helmet, take your your rucksack, and get into the jungle and start learning. Starting this is why we recommend doing um, uh, pull requests and and starting to dig into uh, uh, the, the the core of the code and start learning. Uh, there, the usual tips uh, are uh, look at the tests, run the tests with a debugger, step through the code, 
uh, understand the, the, the various components. So these tips are uh, general tips is read the code of other people and grumble on their comments because comments are you talking to the people that follow you. So no easy answer uh, for that, Yusuf. Sorry about that. This is why in December we we told uh, interested people uh, to to start learning and get oriented as early as possible. Other questions, or tell me if I don't answer the questions. Uh, So there, uh, I have a question about the length of the Docker-based Jenkins Quick Start example project. Uh, now we're we're expecting. Um, now I don't don't have to calculate. My my screen here is locked in a weird state. So the project for uh, the Docker-based Jenkins Quick Start is 127 hours project. Uh, in there, there is time for uh, writing, uh, to have meetings, there is time to write the documentation, there is time to do the testing. The continuous testing will be very important, uh, I think. So we believe that for somebody with medium knowledge of Jenkins and Docker, uh, the allocated time is enough uh, to do something uh, useful and, and have an efficient uh, result. If you work quicker uh, than that, and you can add that uh, in your proposals, saying, well, this could be a stretch goal. If we solve the problems uh, quicker than thought, uh, we could then do this or add that feature or add that feature. So. You can describe that. Did I answer your question? Okay, so aim at 127 hours. Um, uh, describe your project plan. Show that you have thought about it, that you understood the problem and you know what the workload is. So we, we we don't want to see people strolling in, the hands in the pockets, whistling and saying, well, okay, I'll, well, I, I could do something here. No, no, we want people that know what it is, that know where to start, uh, um, how do you say that in English, where, where you need to grab the stuff and where you, you need to start working and then you're going to start with that. And that important thing also is what are the risks? What could go wrong? If this goes wrong, then I'll do that or these kind of things. But we can discuss that in other office hours. If you want to come back uh, next week, don't forget that we're going to start one hour earlier in some parts of the world. Uh, we, we can discuss these strategies and, and we're here, it's open. We can take a virtual cup of coffee together and discuss your doubts or your questions and, and uh, people are there to help you. Okay, we're reaching the top of the hour. So I didn't think that we would fill an hour, but I managed to talk so much with the help of Alyssa and Bruno. Uh, uh, talk that much to fill the complete hours. Uh, don't hesitate to uh, ask your question, fly in it, it's an adventure. Don't be disappointed if you don't make it this year. At least in the process, you will learn something useful, you will have fun. And uh, there are other uh, uh, editions of this program. But now I'm telling you that you're going to fail. No, you're all going to make it. No, that's that's unfair thing. <laughs> there will be only four or five that will make it. But I don't want to uh, disappoint or or uh, 
uh, um, make that the others will lose courage and say, wow, okay. No, it's a great adventure. Even competing is already worthwhile. You will learn. Okay, I'll stop babbling here. Nice to have met uh, uh, you. A lot of people here are new. Didn't meet them before. Uh, we'll be back in a week. Uh, remember the time, be careful. We're going to announce it on, on Gitter to be sure that you don't miss it. And we'll go back to the half hour format, unless there are many, many questions. But normally half an hour is good. And we have that every week. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a nice rest of the day. Good night. Good afternoon, uh, good day. <laughs> this is how your day is starting. Yep. And uh, okay. Bye. bye bye, everybody. Bye bye.